we have a very tricky counting question in front of us, so let's make sure we read it carefully to avoid overcounting or undercounting. Jacob has three colored pencils, red, blue, and green. He colors every vertex of a regular octahedron with one of these three colors. And as you can see, regular octahedron has six vertices. If the colorings that differ only by one or more rotations of the octahedron are counted once, how many ways can Jacob color the vertices such that every face of the octahedron has at least two vertices of the same color? And this is crucial, that colorings that differ only by one or more rotations are counted once. So for example, take a look at these three octahedrons. They look different, the colorings look different, but in fact, all of them are the same thing. So all of them are the same octahedron. If you consider the rotation to not change the identity of the octahedron, because to go from the first octahedron to the second one, we are simply rotating everything this way. And as you can see, if you rotate it this way, we are going to get the arrangement shown right here. And how do you go from the first one to the third one? Well, in that case, we are rotating everything this way. So we are rotating everything this way, so that blue is going to pop back up, while the green is going to submerge down below. And we see that the blue is coming back up, and the green one is being rotated downward. So all of these octahedron are the same thing. So that's good to know, but what kind of arrangement are we looking for? What kind of octahedron do we want? We want the octahedron such that every face of the octahedron has at least two vertices of the same color. And we see that this is the case for this octahedron. This is a nice example. And as you can see, every single face, no matter which face you pick, so for example, if you pick this one, we see that it has two vertices of the same color. And it's not hard to see that it works for every single face. For example, for this one, for this one, we see that it has two red vertices as well. In fact, no matter which triangle you pick, you're going to have two red vertices. That's not hard to verify. So we are looking for octahedrons that look something like this. But I want to point out that we don't have to use every single color. We can just use one color if we want to, or we can use just two, because there is no restriction that we have to use every single color. Before actually getting started, I want to recognize Hizami Anuar for being the very first person to correctly answer this challenge with the answer of 30. Now, let's actually get started. So how I'm going to approach it, we are going to break this question apart into three cases. The first case is when we only use one color, and the second case is when we use exactly two colors, and the final case is when we use all three colors. And it's pretty easy to see that if we are using only one color or if we are using only two colors, our condition is always satisfied. That is, we are always going to get the octahedron that we want. Because if we are using one color, then obviously every face of our octahedron is going to have at least two vertices of the same color. And for two colors, that should apply as well. Because for every face that you look at, if you are only using two colors, then two of the vertices have to have the same color. Because you only have two colors available, it's impossible to color every single vertex of this equilateral triangle with different colors because we can only use two colors in this case. So our condition is going to be satisfied for two colors case as well. Now for three colors, our condition does not have to be satisfied, so we are going to have to think it through. Okay, for one color, we obviously have only three choices, every single vertex being red, every single vertex being blue, or every single vertex being green. So one color case is pretty obvious. Now let's get to two color cases, which can be tricky. We are only going to consider the case where we have red and blue. And once we have all the cases with red and blue counted, we simply have to multiply this thing by 3 because we also have case with blue and green, and we also have case with red and green. But everything is symmetric, and there's nothing special about red and blue. So once we have all the cases for red and blue, just multiply that by 3, and we should be done. 
So how do we count this? Well, I'm going to break it apart as follows. I'm first going to consider the case where we have red on top and the bottom. So I'm first going to count every single octahedron that can be rotated such that we have red on top and red down below. Well, now we only care about what kind of vertices go in this square, go in the center part. And one possibility is blue, 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 blue. So every single thing can be blue. Or we can have a blue, 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 red. Or blue, blue, red, red. Or blue, red, blue, red. And finally, we can have red, 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 blue. So I first counted the case with four blues, then three blues, then two blues. There are two separate cases for that. And finally, one blue. And obviously, we, we don't care about red, 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 because we already counted that in the one color case. Now, there are two questions you may have. First of all, do we count blue, 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 red once, twice, three times, or four times? Well, we are only going to count it once because, for example, blue, blue, red, blue can, can be obtained by rotating this octahedron. So we only care about blue, 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 red because other cases with one red and three blues can be obtained by rotating the octahedron this way. And the second question you may have is, have we already counted blue, red, blue, red with blue, blue, red, red? Because if we put blue, red, blue, red, you may say, can we rotate this such that we have red on top, red down below, and we have blue, blue, red, red? And the answer is no. The only other way of rotating this such that you have red on top and red down below is to rotate it like this such that this red is going to come up and this red is going to go down below. But you are still going to have red, blue, red, blue. So we have not counted this case with BBRR. So we have five cases in this case. So we have five cases. Now I'm going to count the case where we have a blue on top and a blue down below such that we have not counted this in our first case yet. So what I'm saying is that we are going to count the cases where we have a blue on top, blue below, but we don't have two reds opposite each other. Because if we count another case with two reds opposite each other, then we can rotate this octahedron such that we get one of the cases that we already counted. So we don't want that. So we cannot have two reds opposite each other. So the only possibility in this case is to have red, blue, 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 or red, red, blue, blue. We cannot have red, blue, red, blue, or red, 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 blue, or red, 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 because we already counted that. Reds are opposite each other. That's not allowed. So we have two more cases. So we have two more extra cases. Finally, let's count the cases where we have blue on top and red down below, such that none of the reds are opposite each other and none of the blues are opposite each other. Well, the only way that's possible is if we have red, red, blue, blue. If we have more than two reds, then we are going to have two reds opposite each other. Same applies for blue. So the only possibility is to have two reds and two blues. And obviously, red, blue, red, blue is not going to work because reds are going to be opposite each other. So we only have one more possibility in this case, red, red, blue, blue. So we have one more possibility. And obviously, we have exhausted every single condition. So we have eight cases, five plus two plus one, multiply that by three, and we get 24 cases for two colors. Now let's take a look at the most interesting part where we have to use every single color. And as previously mentioned, for this one, we don't necessarily have to get the octahedron that we want. The octahedron such that every face has at least two vertices of the same color. And I'm going to make a very interesting assertion. I contend that we are going to have the octahedron that we want that we want if and only if we have a monochromatic square, monochromatic square, or square made of only one color. So that's only one color. And in the example that we had, that's what we had. We had this square, one, two, three, four, made out of only one color. 
And what I'm asserting is that this has to happen. So what I'm saying is that if we are using every single color, the number of octahedrons that we want and the number of octahedrons with monochromatic square are the same. And you may say, how do you prove it? Let's prove it this way first that if we have a monochromatic square, then we have to have the octahedron that we want. That's the easier part. So if we have a square, so something like this, then obviously we have to have the octahedron that we want because every single triangle, every single face is going to contain two vertices of the square. So every single face has to have two vertices of the same color. So we have proven that. Now let's try going the other way, that if we have the octahedron that we want, it has to have a monochromatic square. We are going to try to find a counterexample. We are going to assume that this is possible, that we can have the configuration that we want without having a monochromatic square, and try to find that and see if we get any contradiction. And here's how I'm going to do it without loss of generality. Let's say the top vertex is red because whichever octahedron we get, because we are using every single color, we can always rotate it such that we have red on top. Now I'm going to break this into two cases. First case is where we have blue or green or as the bottom vertex, it does not matter which, the proof is the same. And the second case is where we have red down below. Let's start with the first case and let's say we have a blue opposite red. In this case, we have to have green in the middle square. It does not matter which. So let's put green on one of the vertices. And now realize that looking at this triangle, looking at this face, we see that this vertex has to be red or green because this vertex has to have two vertices of the same color. So this is red or green. Now, also realize that by looking at the face below, by looking at this face, that we see that this vertex has to be blue or green. So this vertex has to be red or green and blue or green at the same time, which means this vertex has to be green. So we know this has to be green. And now we can repeat the same thing with this face and this face to obtain that this vertex has to be green and repeating it once more, we get that this vertex has to be green too. So we have this square, we have gotten this square, such that every single vertex is green. So we have a contradiction. Now let's take a look at the second case, where we have red on top and red down below. Because we are using every single color, we have to have at least one blue and one green in the center square. And also realize that we cannot have a blue and green adjacent to each other because we are going to have a face that we do not want such that every single vertex is different. So we cannot have green and blue next to each other. So let's put green opposite it. And now we can repeat the same thing. Looking at this face, looking at this face, we see that this vertex has to be red or green. If you look at this face, then we see that this vertex has to be blue or red. That's telling us that this vertex has to be red. And using the same reasoning, you can show that this vertex has to be red too. So we have found a square that looks like this, such that every single vertex is red. So we have a contradiction once again. So we have proven this. And how many octahedrons have a monochromatic square? Well, that's just three of them. Because once you pick the color for the square, the entire octahedron is determined. For example, if you pick green as the color of the monochromatic square, then the other two vertices have to be red and blue. So we don't get any more choices after that. Of course, red, blue, and blue, red, they are the same thing because you can rotate the entire octahedron. So we have three cases, one for each color of the square. So what's our final answer? That's three plus 24 plus three. So our final answer is three plus 24 plus three, also known as 30. So let's go back up. So our final answer to this pretty hard counting question is 30.